the last menu customization items that we'll deal with now are data boxes. So we'll look here at an operating screen to be able to identify where the data boxes are, what is fixed, and what can be customized. Simply by pressing my data key on the front panel, I can enable or disable my data boxes. In this case, I have a fixed data box in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. This will remain constant as long as data boxes are selected to be on screen. In the lower margin of the screen, here you can see that I have three data boxes of varying types. These are highly customizable, and we'll look at some of those options. Bear in mind that there's also a fourth data box available that's referred to as the go-to data box. The go-to data box will only appear on screen when a go-to waypoint is enabled. The go-to data box shows any combination of information about that go-to waypoint that the user wishes to see. So now, let's take a look at how we manipulate and customize some of these data boxes. In order to begin customizing my data boxes, I'll now transition from the system menu, which is where I was before, to the data box menu. In this case, I'll simply take my roto key, rotate it to the left, to select the data box menu. A single press will access the general tab. And note that for data boxes, there's only a single tab here. I'll exit now to an operating screen to give you an idea of what data boxes can look like and the combination of some of the information. The easiest way in this case for me to exit the menu is to simply turn the roto key all the way to the right, highlight my exit menu button, and press that. And you see that I return to an operating screen. In the case of the data boxes, and I have three on screen here, there are combinations of information and we'll talk about how the descriptions are in the menu to best customize these boxes. Data box one on the far left is selected as single numbers, but is showing enough pieces of information that that information scrolls or dwells through, in, through separate pieces of information. Data box two is selected as a split data box. This generates a smaller number, but gives us the ability to use more information in each data box. Data box three, in this case you can see course over ground, is selected as a single non-dwelling or non-scrolling data box. The go to data box, data four, can also be selected as single or split. We'll show you now a brief example of how the go to or data box four appears on screen. We've already shown how easy it is to navigate using NavNet 3D. I'm simply going to select my cursor, select any point on screen, and mash my go-to button. This will create automatically a go-to waypoint. And not only does the waypoint appear, but you'll see the data box appear in the lower right hand of the screen. I'll take my cursor, select a point on screen, and simply hit go-to. As soon as that happens, in the lower right corner, you see data box four appear automatically with the combination of information that I want to see for that go-to waypoint. We've seen how simple it is to access our menus simply by hitting the menu key and then using the roto key to access a particular screen or a particular tab. One of the great advantages of the design of the NavNet 3D system is our ability to customize much of the data we see on the screen from the screen itself. In this case, I'm simply going to use my cursor, move the cursor into a data box, and see what happens. As I bring my cursor into the data box on the right, or data box three here, we'll see the color of the data box go from a simple gray to a highlighted blue. A right click of the mouse brings up all of the attributes that I can add or subtract from that data box. In this case, this is a fixed data box showing course over ground. If I want, as an example, to change that from course over ground to speed over ground, I simply deselect course over ground, select speed over ground, and the number appears in the data box. Now that we've shown you how easy it is to choose particular pieces of information in a data box from the operating screen, we'll show you what some of the menus look like. Now, those menus can be accessed from the menu button.
They can also be accessed on screen from the customized function within the data box itself. In this case, I'll do the same action that I did before. I will right click inside my data box, which brings up the list of attributes I can turn on or off. At the bottom of this list is a customize function. As soon as I engage the customization function, it will automatically put me into the appropriate menu for that data box. And from this menu, I can begin to select or deselect those items that I want to see. Now that I've entered my specific menu for this data box, this is where I can select some of the higher features or advanced features of that data box. For example, this is where I can change from a single to a split data box, and I can also change the data that's represented in that data box. From the operating menu here, I also have the ability to change the scroll time at the bottom of the screen. For those data boxes for which a split of data is selected or showing a number of pieces of data in a single data box, I can increase or decrease the dwell time for that scroll if I want to see that information on screen longer or shorter. Additionally, I can reset my trip log from this menu and change my true wind reference. The data box display can manually be engaged or disengaged from this menu as well. I hope this menu summary has been helpful and we appreciate your attention. We've made Navnet 3D easy to use and we don't have to touch menus all that often. But by spending some time in these menus and customizing those features that you want to see, here we can ensure that the user sees all the information that's important to them, and perhaps more importantly, doesn't have to see what they don't want to see. Thanks again. Jeff, back to you. Thanks, Matt. Well, this video explains just how easy it is for you to go in and customize your Navnet 3D display to be custom to your preferences. You should be able to go into the menuing system now with confidence and be able to change those user presets to be the presets that you want them to be. So go out, get out of the water, and enjoy your Navnet 3D system. Thanks for joining us.